we don't have our capital stock hasn't been destroyed. Our human capital stock uh, is uh, ready to get back to work. And so that there are lots of reasons to believe that we can get going way faster than we have in previous crises. But I just want to underscore what you're saying. That was uh, White House economic advisor Kevin Hassett basically admitting how people like him in his position in the White House view regular workers as quote unquote capital human stock and not actually people. Uh, look, to be fair, you got to view it like that if you if your goal is to push people back to work in the middle of a pandemic. I mean, we haven't really solved the pandemic. We haven't solved the problem. There's no, there's no vaccine. There's no treatment for it. Uh, all we did was temporarily stall the virus in some areas of the country. Uh, once you open it up, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to spread everywhere. Everywhere. So, yeah, that's a problem. Uh, it's going to drive the infections back up. I can guarantee you a lot of companies, if they, you know, look, if they don't have to provide PPE for their workers, they, they won't. And so that's the problem. And the economic har harm that we endured, of course, uh, because of the first lockdown, meant to get us ready uh, by reopening, uh, for reopening, by doing some testing, contact tracing, ramping up productions, all that stuff, uh, and, you know, get, getting us ventilators. All that time will be wasted because Americans just got bored of coronavirus and decided, oh, you know what, we're going to go and flood the beaches. And by the way, the people in the White House are saying, well, our human stock is ready. Fun. Fun. Uh, and now, like I said, we get the White House referring to people as stock uh, who are ready to come back to work um, at a time when actually a lot of Americans are wary of opening up uh, too soon, too soon. And so, look, that's a problem, right? That's a problem. Uh, so now, we don't even pretend to value life in this country. Uh, let's be honest about that, right? We, we just don't. Uh, and that's, that's a, unless it's unborn, that is. If it's unborn life, then, of course, we value that very, very highly, right? So there's lots of reaction to this. Uh, now, you have Rolling Stone's Peter Wade writing on Monday uh, that the way Hassett used the term so casually lines up with the lack of empathy shown to the victims of the coronavirus by Trump's administration and Republicans since this crisis began months ago. Calling human beings stock, he said, especially as essential workers are putting their lives and bodies on the line right now, is undeniably absurd and heartless. Well, of course, uh, welcome to modern America where we are absurd and heartless, or at least our government is. Human capital stock, according to Le Leah Greenberg, tweeted this out, also known as people, as mothers and fathers and spouses and siblings. They've always been indifferent to human life. In the face of mass, and in the face of mass, mass death, the masks are coming off. This is how, uh, and this is uh, John Walk of the uh, NRDC saying, this is how the Trump White House sees you, American human capital stock. Now, in case you're wondering why we're getting so upset over this quote unquote label, like, is because it, in, in, it dehumanizes hum people, right? And, and that's the problem. It dehumanizes people. It makes it easier to not be invested in whether or not these people live and die. That's true of sending them back to work in unsafe conditions and also about not giving them enough financial support. In fact, Hassett went on to say that they're not considering expanding nutrition benefits or SNAP program. And or doing another round of direct stimulus because they said, well, you know, you know the, the, the economy is picking up at a very rapid rate. Uh, and so we're ready to get everything back up. Uh, go out there. We don't need any of that stuff. Now, look, the stock market's been doing fairly well and the stock market has been rebounding and states, yes, have opened up. It doesn't mean the economy is doing great. <laughs> uh, look, you have 38 million people that are now unemployed. You have 100,000 small businesses that are expected to close permanently as a result of, of course, the closures uh, and not freezing rents and mortgages and allowing, of course, these bills to continue to pile up. Uh, and look, you know, we've got a lot of mass suffering going around uh, around the country. And so, look, we, we've got uh, food banks having demand up by 40%. So, look, they don't care, though. The White House doesn't care. They're focused on policy like, for example, the payroll tax cut. And, and get this, a new 
capital gains holiday. Now, the people that have capital gains that are uh, impacted by this are incredibly wealthy people. So you've got to be kidding me. I mean, come on, dude, really? Not only would a payroll tax cut hurt Social Security, but it also doesn't help people who are unemployed, doesn't help them get jobs. And the people who would benefit from it, the people who are taking home uh, paychecks right now, well, it would be the benefit would be marginal at most. I mean, seriously. Uh, and, of course, capital gains, giant giveaway to the rich. Look, if you haven't been paying attention, and if you if you have been paying attention, I should say, you should know that, that that's been our entire government's response to COVID-19, is to hand over as much wealth to the richest Americans and corporations as they can. It's been a gigantic transfer of wealth, helped along by, of course, the corporate Democrats and Republicans. I mean, give as much money as you can to the rich and let people suffer so they can go back in the market to help boost your stock portfolio. That's it. That's it. And, and this is what's happening. I mean, people are suffering economically. As I said before, there's a real humanitarian crisis happening right now. The solution is not to open up right now. Yes, we want to open up. And in fact, the sooner we all adhere to the uh, you know, physical distancing requirements and wearing masks and doing contact tracing and stuff, uh, and, and allowing the government uh, and, and the companies to work on vaccines, which they are right now, uh, and treatments for this, the sooner we do all that stuff, we, we hold up our end of the bargain, the sooner that we can go back to living life and back to work. We all want to do that, right? But in the meantime, we need to do what government is supposed to be doing. And that's addressing the needs of the population until the crisis is over, until we have a handle on new cases. Until we can, we do those aggressive testing and, and contact tracing and all that stuff. That's why we have a government. That's literally why we pay taxes. We don't pay taxes for them to take that money and upwardly distribute it. But that's what they've been doing. No, we pay them taxes so that they can distribute goods you know, and services where it's needed most in the country. And right now, where the service is needed the most, where that money is needed the most, is in our pockets. And that's what needs to happen. That's why we're citizens and not actual human capital stock. And the fact that we've got people in the White House that are getting paid by our money to sit there and dehumanize us and, and feed us to the wood chipper, I mean, all for the benefit of, of Wall Street, is just absolutely gross. Hey, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look. You know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron. Patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.